part of the problem that we have is because we have followed a policy of focusing on large scale solar plants and not distributed household solar plants. And you get sunlight for 10 hours a day. Out of 24 hours, 12 hours, there's no sunlight. Right. Maybe 14 hours and there's no sunlight. The rooftop solar has not been going great, especially in a country that's as populated as India. Tata Plants done a wonderful job. It's the biggest sustainability project in the world. That is the kind of project we need. Hi, this is R. N. Bhaskar from Bhaskar Ki Business Party. Each week we come to you with a policy analysis, a conversation or an occasional business story. And today we are dealing with a conversation. And my conversationalist today is an amazing journalist with years of experience, Katya Naidu. Katya, Hello. it's good to have you here. Thank you, sir. Katya, there is a, you've been covering the power sector okay. and among other sectors also. But there seems to be a crisis in the power sector. Right. Can you dwell on that? So it's, uh, so, it's good news and bad news that comes with good news, as always. So, solar power is reaching a sense of maturity, so okay. which is extremely good news because we want to put more renewables out there, reduce, uh, you know, thermal power dependency, etc., etc., and coal dependency. It's also good for the country. Uh, so, now, around installed capacity last year, solar power has uh, crossed 100 gigawatts, which is a very good achievement. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these achievements also come with interesting quirks, which a lot of countries which have gone renewable much ahead of us are also facing. One such example is in May, when actually we had unseasonal rains. So, the spot prices of uh, solar day head trading power fell one by below 1 rupee. And how much of it was there on the exchanges? Around 8,000 megawatts of it was there on the exchanges. So it had to be sold under rupee because everybody, all, all the power distributors had purchased expensive power, hoping for a heat wave while we got rains. So the sudden drop is actually a big loss because uh, you know there is some amount of merchant power in every solar installation. So can you tell us why are they leaving merchant power and why not put it in long-term PPS where the other person is obligated to buy power? Uh, Katya, Katya, my, to my understanding, and even I've worked on solar power, but to my understanding, solar power has two problems. One is, if I put in a capacity of, one me of let's say, 100 megawatts, mm -hmm. theoretically, mm -hmm. my actual throughput of power is, is just about 16 or 17 mm -hmm. megawatts. Right. So, I'm putting in the capacity of 100 megawatts. On paper, it says I've got 100 megawatts of power, but I'm actually using only 16. I'm getting a throughput of 16. Why? Because one is conversion efficiency. Mm. The second is in any case, because solar power only works on the sunlight, and you get sunlight for 10 hours a day. It means 22 hours, 24 hours. I'm out of, out of 24 hours, 12 hours, there's no sunlight. Right. Maybe 14 hours, and there's no sunlight. So, Part of the capacity is wasted because of this night time where there's no solar power. Mm. And part of it is because of conversion efficiency. Right. Okay, that's, those are the two reasons. Now, effectively, I've set up a solar power plant. I make sure that I have a PPA, which means I must generate so much of power without fuel. Right. So I generate this power. At the same time, because if there's a cloud, my sun, my solar production falls. So I have to make sure that I have more capacity than what it promised. Right. Okay. So I set up additional capacity. But what if the sun, the sunshine does not have a cloud coming in? It means I'm generating more power. So the extra power beyond the PPA, mm -hmm. I have to sell as merchant power. Unless, of course, I have invested in power storage facilities, which means a lot of capital cost with not so good returns. Right. That is the reason why many solar power players go into merchant power as well. Right. So that sounds like it, but how do grid, how can a grid manage when solar power, which has a lot of power in the daytime, and which cannot be switched on and switched off like thermal power or gas-based power, which is easy to do. <clears throat> how do grids manage it? Because this is the solar excess problem has happened in Germany. It's happened in the state of California. Where there is a lot of power coming in, fewer buyers, because it is time bound, they'll have to manage it. 
So this management, mismanagement is something a lot of people abroad are also facing. Uh, yes. The most efficient country in terms of managing solar power loads is Germany. Right. Germany has had more experience. Okay. So the past experience shows that there are at least two days with a maximum of four days when you are generating more solar power than what you need. Now, when you gen generate more solar power, what do you do? You have to shut down your thermal power right. plants because those can be shut off and the solar plant is available. Now, when the solar plant is available, there are four days in a year when there is even so much more solar power. So, Germany encourages companies to use more power and pays them for using the power. Right. Okay. It's a very unusual way of, of creating demand to use up the additional capacity of solar power on those four days. Right. So, that is one trick and countries and grid managers have to make sure that they have already budgeted for the average ebbs and flows of solar power and grid power and demand. Needs computation, needs planning. And most of all, it needs to make sure, you need to make sure that the people who are supposed to deliver actually deliver. But that's the model that cannot be replicated in India with the state of our power discoms. I don't think we can afford to pay anybody to use up power. Exactly. So what India has done is, we have something called the REC, Renewable Energy Certification, which takes care of this problem. So if I generate solar, it said that 20% of the grid must be solar power. That's what the government said. So let's say you're the grid and you're getting only 15% from all the manufacturers that we have. So 5% you have to buy it from other grids mm. who've got more merchant capacities or solar power. Right. And since you're going to be using their power, they get a certificate that they've, that they've generated solar power mm. and have met that capacity. And this money has gone towards that account to manage the accounts. Right. Many companies play games there and they fictitiously purchase certificates, mm -hmm. fictitiously sell certificates just to make that extra money and state governments are in league with private players and the central government just has a wink and a nod and pretends it's not seen it. So in India, it's a mismanaged situation. Solar power is tricky and part of the problem that we have is because we have followed a policy of focusing on large scale solar plants right. and not distributed household solar plants. Right. If you look at it, a lot of solar producers right now are independent power producers, captive powers who push it to the grid and then get, you know, to meet their sustainability targets. And then we have, you know, some people who are risky enough to take up a little bit of merchant as well. Yes. But the <clears throat> rooftop solar has not been going great, especially in a country that's as populated as India. Don't you think we should pick up? In last year, according to PIB data, it's gone up by 53%, but on a very, very small base, exactly. minuscule base. In the whole basket, it's not even more than 10, it's under 10%. Right. If 5%, you whole basket, 5 huh? if I'm not wrong. So it's got a very small. The reason is that governments make more money and private sector makes more money in large scale solar plants. Okay, point one. Point two, it's a, it's, it's a sad thing that India faces. When I sell grid power, I make sure the farmer gets cheap power. Right. I cross-subsidize. So if you're a friend of mine, I'm a politician, I'll make sure that for your industrial needs, maybe it's a sugarcane plant. Mm. I will give you power and say that, look, this power was solar power. It was not thermal power. In a way, it's an indirect power theft, classified in a different category. True. Now, because you get power at a subsidized rate, because I'm showing it, I'm giving it to industry, but you show that you're using for agriculture. So you get subsidized power. So the misclassification, where a friend of mine, as a friend of mine, you use power, which is for industry, but show it that you use for agriculture. That is not possible with solar power because solar power has to go wherever it has been produced. produced true. So as a result, governments like grid power because they can play games with it. True. They can play favorites with it. Mm. So they take large plants, 
work with grids, all that done. Now, the beauty about rooftop solar, and this is something you can learn from Germany. In eight years' time, Hermann Scheer, the energy minister of Germany at that time, discovered that the rooftop solar project was so successful that it had generated more jobs than even the automobile sector. True. So in 2011, I remember pre preparing a paper sent to the government then and told the government that if Germany can create more jobs than the automobile sector, and automobile is the backbone of Germany. Mm. Why can't India do the same thing? Mm. India has more people. Right. India has more sunlight. Need more jobs also. You need more jobs. And our back of the envelope calculation showed that you can create 83 million jobs on rooftop solar. Right. But look what happened. When Modi, when the Prime Minister Modi won the last elections, next week he came out with a huge advertisement. We will put up one crore solar installation for rooftop. Did it happen? Right. The pricing was wonky. The planning was wonky. Mm. And the private economics is wonky. Right. So it didn't work. So also, power is such a pole issue. So the more control lies with the government, the more it helps, right? If you are rooftop, you are just giving the control away to the people. Exactly. So the government loses all control. Okay. I mean, one of the best rooftop solar projects was taken up in Tripura. Right. Okay. In uh, Tripura, where what they did was the government put up fifty thousand solar solar panels, and the cost per solar panel was under fifty thousand. As against the cost estimated by the Prime Minister's office at over, over 1 lakh. Mm -hmm. Huge difference. He did it remarkably fast. And the beauty was the villagers were very happy because nobody could have load shedding there. Right. They didn't need the government. And that is painful for government officials because if nobody needs us, how will we make money? Exactly. <laughs> so coming to load shedding, something very interesting happens more on the technical aspects of renewable and grid is that in Spain and Portugal recently there was a huge blackout and then blackout is bla and renewables are being big because they use a lot over 50 percent of the power generated comes from renewables so and the technical part here is that inertia of mm. renewables is very low which means the resistance mm. when there are a lot of fre frequency changes mm. which has actually uh, you know it's definitely it's uh, tough to start it up gas and thermal are very very stable and then they keep the grid stable too so there's a factor which says that grid stability will probably be affected by too much when too much comes into renewable mix so we have not yet gone smart on our grid so how do you think when the problem comes to us how do you think we'll look there are, there are many ways of smart grid management there are many many ways if i'm producing more power than what is needed i use that power to push water up right and when there's no power, I use a, wheel, a water turbine to generate power with the same water. Okay. So effectively, I balance out demand and supply. Okay. I create demand with the water being pushed up. And I create supply whenever needed through that water. Okay, that's one simple way. The second is you put in battery storage. Batteries, right. The third way is you make sure that you balance out the thermal generation with... Uh, Solar, but it needs good work and good planning, which India has not done. So, thermal power plants also are, are bound by PPAs. They, which means the grid, the power uh, uh, distributor has to buy certain has to buy certain amount, and those contracts are for twenty five years, and they've already been executed. How do you manage that? So that is and why that is, that is why you have PSU units of power generation which have no PSU, which have no PPAs. Right. So you'll find. That whenever there's a problem, it's a public sector units that are shut down right. because no penalty clause for non pickup of power. Right. So you'll find on an average, public sector units having a low capacity utilization, low PLF, then private sector because private sector can't have it. Right. The government effectively is taxing the taxpayer mm. to bail out the PSUs which have stopped generating power. All problems which came from cross subsidies and complicated system of our subsidies. Yes. Plus, of course, the subsidies yes. and the theft. And the theft and the loss. Yes. So, all in all, we need a complete rehash and we should be prepared before a large chunk of solar power gets added to the grid. That's the yes. next large and, and you need to have community solar powers. Right. The best experiment I can think of, which we'll do as a podcast later, is 
the kind of project that Tata Power has created in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and now in Odisha. Right. Where it sets up a power station at its own expense in a village, make sure that everyone in the village gets solar power for one hour free to entice them into using solar power. Right. Price is a little higher, but it's cheaper than generator power. Right. And they teach the people how to make money through enterprise. A chakiwala, which converts wheat into flour, is told him, why are you using a diesel genset? Use my power. It's one third the price of a diesel genset. Of course. Yeah. And so they, edu- they teach housewives how to use the electric machine to make clothes. Right. And Tata Pan's done a wonderful job. It's the biggest sustainability project in the world. That is the kind of project we need. And we need more private sector people to come into the project costs money. And many private sector players are not willing to spend that money. Right. Or the government should create subsidies to create such projects. But you're right. It's a very interesting area and what you raised is very interesting. Solar power can be a big problem if you don't know how to manage it. Of course. And solar power can be a big problem if you don't focus on rooftop solar. Of course. Because the last village, the last house in the village gets power from the sun. Right. You put in a grid line to just get power there. In a city it costs about a thousand rupees to provide connection to your house. Mm-hmm. In a village, it costs a lakh rupees, two, 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 two lakh rupees. Right. Because the longer the wire, the more it costs. And the longer the wire, the more the losses. So, great part of villages is not right. It must use solar power. And rooftop solar is the best answer. But the government has its own views. Yes. But thanks, Katya. It's good to talk to you about such a vital issue that India needs and is unable to confront. Thanks a lot, sir. Always a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. Let's have such discussions more often. You'll find us now every morning at 8.15 a.m. on weekdays where we come out with daily news or better still, news behind the news. Do watch it.